Good morning everybody, KT here with Wise Images Photography and today I wanted to know if you've ever wondered how could you actually use a telephoto lens to help improve your photography? Well today that is what I'm going to go ahead and go over. I'm going to go over probably some maybe obvious things for you and maybe some not so obvious things on how a telephoto lens could really help you to improve that your photography and get a little bit more creative with it. Now before I even go into that I want to tell you guys about the hot mess that happened to me um, last week. Um, guys, it is that season. The wasps are out. And uh, so needless to say, I was going to make this video last week. Um, it is now Monday. Um, but anyways, what happened was, is I was going to make this video and I have uh, lemongrass in the front yard and it kind of sways like this. And every time it sways, it was setting off my ring camera, which would set off my phone, which would upset Bo because he would think that somebody's at the front of the, uh, of the house. And of course, you know, he's the dog and he has to protect the house, right? So I was like going, I, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this video if Bo keeps on, you know, barking every two seconds, he hears the ringtone go off. So needless to say, I decide I'm going to go outside and I'm going to cut back the lemongrass. And so I go out there and I cut it back and I'm like, ah, this will take me like five minutes, right? Um, needless to say, I hit the side of the house, wasps come out smack me in the face, I slap off my glasses and I'm running around and I'm like, well now I gotta find my glasses and I found my glasses and I was like, oh no, man, that's it. I'm like, cause once I get stung by a wasp, I always have to take Benadryl because of the reaction that I get. Um, so needless to say, this is what I look like um, the following morning. And by the end of the day, I was in the urgent care. I was having a little bit of problems breathing and um, yeah, so anyways, I had even iced and made a baking soda powder for my face and everything, uh, but apparently it was not, uh, it, it still ended up getting me. So anyway, so I'm a little bit behind schedule because that wasp thing took me out for two and a half days. I cannot believe it. Um, but anyways, I'm doing better. My face is back to normal. Um, so I didn't want you guys to necessarily <laughs> have to watch me with a big blown up face um, last week. So I decided to wait till today to go ahead and get everything done. But anyways, let's jump into this video. Let's go ahead and talk about how how this telephoto lens is going to help you to improve your photography. One, it gets you into the middle of the action. Um, if, let's say for example, let's talk about sports. You know, if you were to take a wide shot of people playing sports, it wouldn't be very interesting. But if you have a telephoto lens, you can get into the middle of that action. Um, when you were shooting wildlife photography, and I have an example here for you, um, this is not an award-winning shot. A lot of the shots actually today are not like Oh, inspiring shots today. A lot of these shots were taken for the purpose of showing you how you can use this lens. Some of them are, um, some of them are more creative, but some of them were just to show you what, uh, how this, how this works. So needless to say, let's look at this picture of this alligator here. You can see it looks like I am maybe 10 feet away from this alligator. Actually, when you look at the next picture here, you can tell it looks like I'm even maybe, you know, I don't know. I'm not really in the best gauge of, of length and distance here, but you can tell that I am definitely set back from this alligator. I want to say that I'm probably about 60 feet away from the alligator. So when you look at this picture, you can see that I'm very close. It looks very close. That is the advantage of having a telephoto lens because you can get in closer to your subject. And especially with wildlife, it allows you to admire your wildlife from a distance and not get in their space. One, it keeps you safe because you're at a safer distance from them. But two, it allows you to not disturb them while maybe they are eating or doing whatever that they are doing. So next up, we have this cute little tortoise. You can see I'm probably about 150 millimeters. Um, oh, shooting wide here. I'm not 100% sure, but I can tell that there is definitely some compression going on there because, you know, we got the, the background is blurred a little bit. But the nice thing about using a telephoto lens is, is it also helps you to kind of like isolate your subject because as you can see, I was able to zoom in a little bit closer and now you really can see the, the details in the tortoise's legs. You can see his face. You can see all the little grain, uh, all the little I, you know, all his, all of his shell and everything. So you can get in a lot more closer 
and isolate your subjects. And so that's another thing that you can do when you have a telephoto lens. Now, the next thing is what we call lens compression. And you can use lens compression to make objects, it's, it's, I'm not gonna go in depth with this about you know the depth of field and this and that and the, all the crazy stuff, right? I'm gonna give it to you in simple terms. Basically what it is, is lens compression is when objects will appear closer than they really actually are. It's this illusion when you have a lens that is 100 millimeters or, fur, or, or more, right and what happens is is you're farther away from your subject and you're zooming in and because you're doing this everything in the background seems like it's a lot closer now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some pictures I'm going to show you a picture of a lighthouse when I went out to New Smyrna I went out early in the morning um, it was kind of like no clouds in the sky this particular day so everything's like baby blue this day um, I you know I didn't look to see if there was going to be clouds or you know anything interesting in it but I wanted to go ahead and show this idea of compression and so what I did was I took this picture here this is on 16 millimeters it's just a wide shot you can even see my shadow over here in the far left hand corner I did it because I wanted you guys to see how far this lighthouse actually is away from me so I'm on this boardwalk you can see the lighthouse is smack dab in the middle of the of the scene and it looks very far away this is 16 millimeters now when I go to 50 millimeters you can see that now I'm still in the same spot I'm still far away from my object here but now I've zoomed in a little bit but now you can see that the lighthouse looks and appears a little bit closer then I went ahead and I took another shot and this time I switched to my telephoto lens for you all and now I'm at about 150 millimeters with my camera and you can tell that now the lighthouse is coming in even closer. I decided that I was going to focus on the palm fronds in the front and let the lighthouse be out of focus in the background. And then I decided to switch to 60 mil, uh, 600 millimeters, my apologies, uh, about 550, 600 millimeters. And now you can see that that lighthouse really is up close and personal. And when you look at that original picture, you can see the difference of having that compression, having the, the lighthouse appear a lot closer than it actually was. Now, real quickly, if you guys not have, have not grabbed the how to step up your photography skills in five easy steps, I'm going to leave a link below. So make sure you guys grab that. And if you guys are finding value in this and this is something that's helping you guys with your photography, please make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. It helps with the algorithm and whatnot. Let's go ahead and jump back into another photograph here. This is the last idea that I want to go ahead and talk with you about is how you can actually use your telephoto lens to create landscape photography. Now, some people go, what? I would have never thought of using a, a telephoto lens for landscape photography. Now, here's my point. When you look at this particular photo here, this is shot on 16 millimeters. Look at how wide it is. Really, when you look at it, you don't know what is the subject. It's just a nice wide shot. Yeah, it's a pretty picture of a beach. Yay, we love it. Absolutely fantastic. But what I can do is when I switch to my telephoto lens, if I wanted to, I can zoom in on the lighthouse. And now you can tell using the rule of thirds, you can beautifully see that lighthouse. Now, what would probably make that picture even better was if maybe we had some clouds in the background, and maybe if I had looked at the weather or something like that. But you can use a telephoto lens as a landscape lens. I am gonna go ahead and go over a couple more examples just so that I can show you some of the things that we were talking about. Remember how I was talking about isolating your subject. I was also talking about the compression. So when you look at this particular picture of the bird, you can see that you can see this bird very clear. He also appears very, very sharp. And that's because the weeds in the back, the grass is probably maybe 40 feet behind the bird. I'm away from the bird. I'm zooming in on the bird. So now I've created that isolation of the bird and he appears even more sharp because I have that bokeh in the background because I got that compression going on in the background. Now let's go ahead and look at this next picture. And this next picture is going to be of vultures on an alligator. So it's not a very squirmish picture, but if you don't want to see a dead alligator, then you know, don't then then you may want to 
jump ahead. All right, so needless to say, um, in this particular picture that you guys are seeing right there, you can see that the vulture is on this alligator. In the background, you guys will notice that there's kind of like this red and blue um, image in the back. And right now I am zoomed in on this vulture. So the object in the back is appearing to be very, very close. But in reality, when I go a little bit wider, you can see that that dock is actually further behind that vulture than it appeared to be. And that dock is probably about 300 feet behind the vulture. But when I zoom in, I stayed in the same spot. I was further away from my vulture, but when I zoomed in, it made that dock appear a lot closer. So I hope that these tips and tricks helped you guys out. And I hope that these give you ideas on how you can be more creative with your telephoto lens. Guys, please make sure that you like, subscribe, share this to others if you found this helpful. And I want you guys to remember that you are awesome. Have a fantastic rest of your week. I'll see you later, alligator.